Yes. Oh, what time is that next Saturday? Six thirty. Or the next Saturday yeah. is nine to eleven. Same, same as last time. Now the title of the message is Lessons of Love and Hate. Lessons of Love and Hate. And if you take a look in the fact, I'm going to have to give all the announcements after the service for you guys because we had a lot. So remind me, don't run off until you get all the announcements. Uh, the definition, according to the old Webster's Dictionary, about love is a feeling of a strong personal attachment induced by sympathetic understanding. That's the first, the primary. The secondary is the benevolence attributed to God as being like a father's affection for his children. Also men's adoration of God. I think it should be the other way around. And then the definition of hate, according to the old Webster's Dictionary, is to feel an intense aversion to detest or abhor. And uh, the secondary definition is to dislike exceedingly. I kind of think most of us knew that, right? Anyhow, we're going to start off today in Matthew chapter 22. And in Matthew chapter 22, uh, as we start here, in verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Now the Pharisees were the interpreters of over 6,000 laws of the Torah. Also they were teachers of the law and judges of the law, judges of law breakers. And then one of them, which was a, a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Well, you find that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, folks. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That you'll find in Leviticus 19.18, by the way. Mm -hmm. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. And while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think you of Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. And he saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto you, My Lord, sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David called him Lord, how is he then the son? And no man was able to answer him, the Lord, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Well, they were testing him. The Pharisees had knowledge of the, uh, of the laws of the, the 6,000 laws of the Torah, and the 600 laws of the Torah. But they didn't have a they didn't have a heart knowledge, and of course, obviously the Lord Jesus knew exactly before they asked him what they were going to ask him. Mm -hmm. And so, here, if you turn over to Luke chapter ten, then we read in Luke chapter ten, starting with verse twenty-five. Now. When we ask, who is your neighbor? Well, your neighbor uh, is anyone, folks. Is anyone who is in need of help that the Lord has put in your path. But be sure that the enemy of God is not your neighbor. In verse 25, and, I, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, 
and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he asked them, and he said unto them, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willingly to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, Certain men went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, and which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise a Levite, he, he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as journey came, where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, carrying him oil and wine, and set him on his beast, and, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave to the host and said to him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come, I'll repay thee. Which now, which now of these three thinkest thou was his neighbor? And to him that fell among the thieves, and he said, He that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do likewise. Now, we're living in a great apostasy today. And the only help, the only mercy that the church is going to get today is the justice that we receive. And that's what the, the Lord provides through us. As you know, that uh, the shooting in Oregon, the shooter, when he killed those ten people, he would ask them, what is your religion? And they would stand up and say, a Christian. If they, they said they were a Christian, they got shot in the head and killed. Right. Now, right at that moment, they had a choice to make, to receive or deny Christ. And, and those that refused to deny Christ went home to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. They were given a choice there. Now, here, uh, you, you've seen what's happened. You hardly seen that even mentioned. In fact, the lamestream media, not only did they hardly mention the fact, that he asked these people, right. uh, but it almost seemed like they were celebrating the fact mm -hmm. uh, that the Christians were being killed. And the interesting thing, had it been a Muslim oh, or homosexual, <clears throat> well, you would have heard it 24 hours a day. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't, you know, it just wouldn't have, it would have been unbearable you know, exactly. by the, the hypocrisy. Yep. Also. Uh, how many times have you seen people being attacked by a group or a crowd that'll gather? And the crowd will gather around while somebody's being attacked by these gangs. Uh, and, and they'll film it. They'll take their, their iPads out or whatever, their cell phones, and they'll film it. And, uh, but hardly any will intervene or help in any way. Every now and then. Like myself. And then, as Doug says, like himself. There was a crowd of people watching you get beat when they attacked you. And uh, that's the way most people are today. I don't want to be involved, you know. Apathetic and pathetic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we're living in, that's one of the reasons you know we're living in the great apostasy. So turn over in your scriptures to Hebrews chapter 13. You see, you really need, because you never know, you never know when you're entertaining angels. Now Abraham didn't know when the Lord Jesus came to the tent in the plains of Mamre in, in uh, Genesis 18. He didn't know that he was the Lord himself until he came in. He didn't know who he was entertaining. But uh, Abraham was, was blessed in the fact that uh, he showed hospitality and then he realized who it was. That he was entertaining. But the Lord Jesus said something too. In Matthew chapter 25, he says, What you've done unto the least of mine, these you've done unto me. Amen. And if we read a verse of one, our brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. You never know when you're entertaining these angels unaware. Uh, Martha. Thought you might have been entertained some yesterday, huh? Okay. 
out there. Uh, and she had a story told us this morning about a, a group of young people that came out to stand with her at the or in Vic at the bloody abortion mill, and uh, then they had somebody that came out to harass them, and then when they turned around, the young people were all gone. And how many did you say there were of them? There were 16 uh, of them. And 16 of them, and uh, she couldn't believe that they could just disappear so quick. Huh. But anyhow, remember them that are in bonds, as bond with them, and then that suffer adversity as being yourself also in the body. We have so many people in, in this state alone, in this country, innocent people that are in prison. People are languishing in prison. People that are being warehoused in prison today. Many of them are innocent. Right. And many of them have been in prison way, way, way past the time where they should have gotten out. They're only in there to provide jobs for those in the industry. Right. And the reason for that is the vast majority of people on the outside really don't care that much. They really don't care. It's an interesting thing because I've talked to a number of these inmates and once we've we've gotten out of prison, the ones where the evidence has come out, either DNA or something has cleared them after spending years in prison. Two cases, it's an interesting thing. I'll never forget this because there were two men, they both had the same first name, Paul. And they were both uh, in prison, uh, supposedly for pedophilia, for uh, molesting their children. And in both cases, both of them spent three years, and in both cases, their wives came forward and admitted that there was never a crime. Now, these guys were convicted with no, no DNA, uh, you know, they were convicted simply on the words of, of these two, of these women. And what had happened is, once, once they sold, the, they went through all the money, sold the houses, they had no more money, nothing left, then they wanted their husbands back. And they come out, and they admit it. They lied. They admit it. They told the children that uh, uh, it's either it's either daddy goes to jail or mommy goes to jail. And so, of course, the boys chose uh, the mother, the one boy and the one girl. And so that's a very strange thing. But that that happened about the same time. But there are so many innocent people in prison today, as you know, Mike Keenan, who uh, spent 24 years on death row. Believe me, it's miserable on death row. You, you don't want to spend 24 hours up there, much less 24 years. Uh, and Joe and so many others out there and uh, who spent all that time, some of them been down for 30 years. 30 years! Okay. Wow. But we have other inmates that are way past their time out and they're in prison because, well, people on the outside, we're all too busy, right? Mm. And uh, that's, that's what, uh, one of the things that we were talking about this morning. Uh, they all called Kevin and I. They all said, they're all calling on, on us to help them. And we need help down here really bad. We really do. We need people to come and volunteer, help us write these letters, answer these phones. We need all of, all of that, but we can't seem to, to get any. I need some doers of the work. That's what I need. Amen. To volunteer some time down here during the day. But anyhow, here he says, Remember them that are in bonds, as bond with them would suffer adversity, as being yourself also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Now listen, uh, what they call same-sex marriage, the Bible calls adultery, it calls fornication. So when you see two same-sex people get married, they're adulterers and fornicators. That's right. And, and they're not married. No. So they're, it is not a marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman. God gave so, us the institution and he gave us the definitions, folks. <coughs> and so don't even be referring to it that. And, it, and you need to stand at your ground and be bold. Amen? Amen. 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 Let your conversation be without covetous enough, and be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Well, folks, all the material things that the world tells you will make you so happy, uh, you're going to leave behind when you die. Mm -hmm. and, and those people, it seems like those people in the prosperity movement, they're always sending me letters, you know, telling me all the things that we can have uh, and, and expand. And now, uh, Joe Holstein, Put a book out 
Uh, basically, the book's about how to shake God down uh, by saying, I am, I am, in other words, using the power of that to obtain material things. Those, uh, listen, if you try to rob God, <laughs> it's going to come back on you. You can't shake God down. No, never. You can't get away with it. He says this. So that we may boldly say, and I mean boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. Now that's what we have to hold to. That's hard to do too. I'd like to turn over to John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, starting with verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you. And you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Now, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. And that's what that, that shooter did. For the name of Christ that they shot, he killed the people. Mm. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no folk for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father. If I had not done among them the work which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass. That the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Well, here, those that the Lord chose will bear fruit. And if they continue to abide, their fruit will remain. And whatever they ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, they will receive. <coughs> now that's in accordance with the will of God. Now, so what you need to do, folks, is try to separate yourself as far from the world as possible. Now, if you're truly saved, the evidence will be by how much the world hates you. And if the world doesn't hate you, you're in more trouble than you know. Right. And I want to take you over to 1 John chapter 4. You guys are supposed to say, Amen! Like that. Amen! Amen! Amen. 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 Right. Yeah. Now, here in 1 John chapter 4, he talks about testing the spirits. Uh, these are the way, because there are way, way, way more false prophets than true prophets. Right. Any and all who deny the deity of Christ are false prophets. Today you have many Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, about one sect of the Seventh-day Adventists uh, believe that Christ is in his deity. But you have so many out there. The Mormons believe that uh, Satan and Christ were brothers. Uh, so what he's talking about, any and all that deny the deity of Christ, they, that he was not only the Son of God, but God the Son. In fact, the word Christ means the Messiah, the Savior, the Deliverer. Okay, that means deity. And we read in verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out of the, into the world. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. 
And this is that spirit of Antichrist, wherefore you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, and he knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I got into a conversation over this marijuana thing with an unsaved person. Uh, he has no ability to, to use logic and, co and common sense. Uh, he was angry also because of, uh, you know, when I said about, uh, if you love your children, get them out of the public school system. Amen. Uh, uh, he said, take that back. That's not true. My son was in the public school system. I said, if you love your children, get them out of that public fool system. It's worse today than it's ever been. It's not getting any better. That's right. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth and not knoweth. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a propitiation for our sins. That's only said twice here in the New Testament. And, uh, well, actually three times, two other places here. And, of course, what that means is a substitutionary sacrifice. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. <clears throat> Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Now let me ask you a question. If you love somebody, will you tell them what they want to hear, or will you tell them what they need to hear? What tell them the hear. truth. And like he said before, what is a neighbor? A neighbor is someone that God places in your path. Someone that is not the enemy of God. When you ask most people today, who is your neighbor? And they'll say the guy who lives next door. Or whoever lives across the street. The neighbor can, can live in China. Whoever it is that God places in your path. And that person needs your help. That's, that's your neighbor. Amen. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he hath dwelleth, and love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. It's actually, for a Christian to fear is actually a sin. Right. Amen? Amen. 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 We love him because he loved us, he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how much, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loved God love his, love his brother also. Amen. It's a horrible thing if you see people that have it. They, they keep into, I, I know some people, some friends of mine, that they just, Hold in a lot of anger. They don't turn that anger loose. Uh, they, uh, you know, so often they want vengeance. Vengeance belongs to God. Anger, if you hold that anger, look, it's not a sin to be angry. As long as you're angry at the right things. The Bible says that we are to be angry and sin not. It means righteous indignation. Is we all should have righteous indignation. Right. In other words, uh, you should be uh, very angry about all around you. People are dying and going to hell. Mm -hmm. right. And the vast majority of people don't care that much mm -hmm. uh, today. And you should be angry about the apathy and ignorance yep. in our society. 
Right. You should be angry at the fact that the last election, such a great, great number of those supposed to be evangelical Christians or Christians stayed home. They didn't bother to go out and vote. That's called a sin of omission. Right. Amen. Turn over in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 8. In Proverbs chapter 8, now, the Muslims claim that they're going to defeat Christianity and, and the Christians, and the reason they're going to defeat us is because we love life and they love death. Okay? So I, I just told them, I said, maybe you ought to just come on, line up and let us shoot you then. <laughs> they didn't go along with that one. Okay. Uh, in Proverbs 8, verses 33, we read this. Hear the instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whosoever findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Wow. All of those. And so, when you go out to the, to the abortion mills and you see all the deathers out there, uh, they're there because they love death. Yeah. And they hate life. Yeah. And they hate God. Amen. Turn over to, I want to turn over to Romans uh, chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, verses 28 to 32. Romans 1, starting with verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient. When you get to the point, okay, that you're given over to a reprobate mind, here, this is the sad sequence of events that God gave them over to. Uh, because he gave them over to uncleanness, uh, he gave them over uh, to vile affections, he gave them over to a reprobate mind, and he says this, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of murder, envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Do you understand? This this is a, the agenda today of the entire Democratic Party. It's the agenda today of Hollywood. It's the agenda today of the public school system. Mm -hmm. Backbiters, haters of God. Haters of God. They're out there. Despiteful, proud boasters of better of evil things and disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now this next verse here. You see, this is how I knew that abomination was a homosexual. This is how you can, you can tell about these people. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, personally, I would never do it, but I won't. Object to anybody that uh, talks. Yep. Yeah, right. Right. Personally, when uh, if you remember when Abomination came out and he said that uh, back in 2008 when he was running and he said that I, I personally believe marriage is between a man and a woman, natural marriage. I said that will change as soon as he gets elected. That will change. He, and, and exactly what <coughs> happened. And, and guess who went right along with him? Rick Warren. <laughs> They went right along with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an amazing thing here. But listen to this. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same. In other words, he's telling you that when you hear somebody say that, you know, I personally would never do it. And uh, I had that one woman who used to run the abortion mill years ago, Carol, I think was her name. And she had told me, listen... Whenever you hear these women say, I would never do it, I personally I would never do it, uh, but I'm not going to judge, that is code word. Uh, when you hear these women say that, that means they've had at least one abortion. And here's somebody who ran three, three bloody abortion mills for years. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, 
not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And of course we knew that uh, Obama was having pleasure in Sodom. And then, if you go to Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13, just one verse, verse 5, we read this. A righteous man hateth wine, 